Hola, hola, my name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, lover of a sunscreen, always on the hunt for a good tinted sunscreen. And today we're talking about one that I got a lot of interest in when I did my best of mineral sunscreens of 2023 video, the Kosas Dream Beam. I've been reluctant to try this. I'm gonna be honest and say I've used very, very minimal Kosas products. Kosas is a really hot brand in the US and I feel like a big hype around them is that they're very, very, very clean. And I met the founder. Well, it was in the same room as a founder. I heard her speak. She seems really, really nice. She's very pretty. I mean, she has a very specific vision for Kosas. Looking at the formulation for this and a lot of their products, I can really see from a formulation perspective how they really approach clean. And it's very interesting how they're doing it. I think it's actually very unique and it's kind of proving very successful for them, both in the fact that it's a very hot brand, but the products I have tried are actually very, very good. I was very reluctant to try this, A, because it's very expensive. It's $40 for 40 mil and the fact that it is such a clean brand and the fact that it's a tinted mineral sunscreen and the fact that Kosas is a really weird brand to me outside of everything I just said because there was a controversy that happened last year 2023 with their concealer people were saying like oh there's mold growing in it a couple chemist friends of mine Javon Jane and Esther actually sent the concealer off to get we call it challenge testing where you in the cosmetic world we do this for most cosmetics you take a product you're developing and they inoculate it with specific bacterias, molds, fungi, and yeast. The idea of these challenge tests are based on the preservative system you have, very minimal to no strains of those specific inoculated things are going to grow in the product. So Javon, Jane, and Esther actually paid for the concealer to go get tested. They have it on their social media. The test came back really good as in the product was well preserved and nothing grew in it, meaning it had a very good preservative system. Kosas came back being like, well, yeah, we test all of our products. We know they're gonna be safe for consumers. And it was like, if you had this controversy of all these people on TikTok, being like there's mold in my concealers. Why didn't you just come out with a statement before? Anyways, back to the sunscreen. Let's get into it. As with all my application footage for sunscreen, I always weigh out and measure how much sunscreen that I need for my face size. If you want to know how much sunscreen you should be putting on for your face size, I'll have a card linked up here. Because it's mineral, I'll apply it to half my face. You can see the side with versus without sunscreen. If there is a cast, how bad it is. With the Dream Beam, you can see as I apply it, I would say it's like a, a milky lotion. But the minute I like swipe it on my skin, it like low key disappears. It's a very lightweight, very elegant texture. Texture. It doesn't take very much to work it into my skin tone. I'm like a Fenty 290, 265 for reference. And it melts in very quick and it sets down very quick. Not very quick. You still have a little bit of playroom, but it's not like a, it stays emollient and greasy and shiny and like it, it's sitting on your skin. It sets down very nicely. And you can see when it actually gets applied to my skin, there is no sign of a cast. It looks like I'm really not wearing anything. If anything, my skin just looks a little bit more perfected, a little bit more refined. And there's noticeably no issue with my facial hair, my eyebrows my hairline it works in very 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 nicely it is contrary to what the brand wants to say it is a tinted sunscreen and it's the tint is very good for my skin tone applying it to my full face it melts in gorgeously i'm very shocked by that all things considered i want to visit some of the marketing claims for this from the kosa site itself clean comfy mineral sunscreen packed with ceramides and peptides to moisturize smooth brighten and create the dreamiest makeup base they claim that it's silicone free safe for sensitive skin dermatologically tested hypoallergenic non-comedogenic non-acneogenic. A lot of those claims are not very official slash fear-mongering, but again, it's a clean brand. The Sephora claims it's a skincare with SPF 40 PA4 plus that meets dreamy makeup prep. This mineral sunscreen melts into skin, so makeup applies smoothly and seamlessly. It visibly brightens, defends against signs of aging, hydrates and soothes for softer, more supple skin. It is water resistant, which I'll get to, and it's safe for sensitive skin, all the claims I made before. It's also formulated with 21.7% non-nano zinc oxide to provide an optimal physical SPF barrier. You know that mineral sunscreens do work the same as chemical sunscreens at physical barrier marketing. And it has a peachy pink hue to help neutralize zinc oxide's natural bluish white color, as you saw in the application. That is very true. Quick formulation thing before we do my final recap of the sunscreen. In terms of filters, this does have 21.7% zinc oxide, which is actually a really high percentage for zinc. The maximum is 25%. When I saw that, I was concerned because that is a very high percentage of zinc. We know a high percentage of mineral filters, white cast, but the elegance, the texture of this sunscreen, all that like that considered is insane. It is a gorgeous formula. It is SPF 40 PA4 plus, but they did do that extra uh, UVA testing for the PPD, persistent pigment darkening, and they got the PA4 plus. I think the tint itself helps a little bit with that just because iron oxides, which is what gives sunscreens tints, it reduces the likelihood of UV exposure causing pigmentation. And then aside from that, the formulation for this is fairly simple. It's alcohol and fragrance free, and it has 
has going off their own claims. It has peptides, it has ceramides, hyaluronic acid, allantoin. So it's by the marketing supposed to be a very moisturizing sunscreen. I didn't actually find it to be very moisturizing, which I actually prefer because again, it sets down really quick. It's not super moisturizing. For oily skin, this actually kept me fairly matte, like not shiny, greasy for a lot of the day. I blot once or twice, but my skin looked gorgeous. Getting to the tint of this, fun fact, on their website, on their FAQ on Kosas's website, they specifically state this is not a tinted sunscreen, which I counter. How are you gonna tell me it's not a tinted sunscreen? It's literally a not white mineral sunscreen. It's like a peachy peak hue to it. I think they were really trying to get away from the fact that, oh, it's not a tinted sunscreen and that it's gonna have coverage for you. I think the Tower 28 sunscreen has like decent coverage to it. This one on me, it's very sheer. When I apply it, it like refines the look of my skin, but it doesn't really cover cover. So you can still see like some blemishes, birthmarks, all that, but it like makes my skin look a little bit more refined. What I will say as well is the fact that I don't think it uses traditional iron oxides in the way that you'd see in a normal tinted sunscreen or foundation. I think this uses interference pigments. If you look on the inky, it has mica. Mica is a substrate that in interference pigments can be coated with other things. And basically it's like a diet pigment is the best way I can explain that. In that the interference pigment that they're using, mica is a substrate, titanium and iron oxides are coating that for the effect that they want. But basically it's kind of refracting light to give an optimized look to the skin, like a very cosmetic refinement of the skin at a surface level. So when you put it on, you're not getting coverage, you're getting a refined look, and there is like these slightest little bits of shimmer. So you just look very glowy, very, very healthy glow, radiant, but not greasy. It's actually very beautiful on the skin. Also worth noting on the FAQ is they specify that this is 80 minute water resistance. It's nowhere on the packaging, the bottle or the box. So they probably got those tests back after the production run. But that's really interesting to know because it is such an elegant mineral sunscreen. It looks gorgeous on my skin. Great primer for makeup and it's water and sweat resistant. Pretty crazy. Other formulation points, it has something called galactoarabinin in it, as well as bioflavonoids and vitamin E. So you're getting some antioxidants from those. That galactoarabinin and potentially the bioflavonoids have an SPF enhancing quality to them. The galactoarabinin is a polymer, which helps with film forming. So that could be where part of the SPF enhancing is, but also due to the composition of it, it might help boost up the SPF a little bit. And then it has allantoin and bisabolol to help soothe the skin. So formulation wise, it's very simple, really nice ingredients for like skincare benefits. And it's fragrance and alcohol free. So overall, for the most part, this is a really good option if you have potentially more sensitive skin. And then getting to my four Bs, as a mineral sunscreen, I do my four B testing rubric. We talk about the beard, beading, beets, and brown skin friendly. Beard, how it plays with facial hair. Again, I have no issue with this. With mineral sunscreens, especially at 21.7% zinc oxide, that raised a lot of questions for me about how it'd look in my facial hair. It like melts in, no weird chalky, no weird balling up or catching in the facial hair beard area. Like it works in gorgeously. Beading, how it plays with other skincare. Does it pill up? Does it ball up? Does it do anything? weird texturally. I never had any issues with sunscreens, especially like this. I always do it on bare skin or at most over a toner or serum that's set. No issues. I've had people in my DMs tell me it did pill for them, what moisturizer they use underneath, or maybe they didn't let what was underneath their sunscreen set down properly. Always count those things, but I had no issue. I rarely ever do though. Beats, how it plays with makeup. This is a gorgeous makeup base on me. It sets down so nicely, so quick. It has no, it's a gorgeous primer. And again, it gives you that refined skin look basically think of like Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. If it's set down more, like that gorgeous glow where it just looks like your skin is just a little bit more perfected. That's the vibe I get from this. And therefore, because of that, makeup just goes on really nice on top. And then brown skin friendly. The tint for this works great for me. Again, Fenty 265, 290. If you're a little bit darker than me, I think it would still be seamless. For deeper skin individuals, I've heard it, it's going to leave a cast. And again, that 21.7% zinc oxide, there you go. But I also know people who have deeper skin say, I like the protection I get from this because it sits down so nicely as a primer. I'll apply it as is and just apply makeup on top and there's never an issue. So that's something worth noting. But that being said, I don't think it's melanated skin friendly. I will link below. The only application I saw on deeper skin was Fumi Mone, who is one of my skincare besties. I'll have the link in the description box to watch her review. If you have dark skin, I would not count on this. I would love to see them launch this with more tints though, because the formula is gorge. So all that said, the Kosas Dream Beam SPF 40 PA4 Plus, high key a hit. I've used this a lot since I first used this because it's a really nice formula. I could slap this on out the door. I know my skin's gonna look just a little bit better. I've had a lot of breakouts happening right now, so I know it's gonna reduce the appearance of those a little bit. It melts in seamlessly, really good protection, it's water and sweat resistant for 80 minutes, which is crazy. And it's really oily skin friendly, which is also nice too. The price point is the biggest con along with the 
tint itself not being deep skin friendly. It's expensive, 40 bucks or 40 mil, that's a lot of money. I would like to see them do more tints of this for the deeper shade range. I think it'd be a hit. And all the clean marketing aside, I think it's a really gorgeous formula. All the clean marketing considered, it's formulated really well. When you're formulating things with higher naturality, it is very difficult to do that, especially a formula this elegant. And they hit this out the park. So Dream Beam is Ramon recommended. This is a gorgeous formula. If you can afford it, I will be using this a lot more. This might be an empty, stay tuned. So all that said, have you used the Dream Beam from Kosas? What was your experience with it? Also, if you do, tell me what your skin tone range is as well. So we have a reference for that. But I wanna know what your thoughts are of this. Do they match mine? Are they different? Love to hear what your experience was. And as always, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and beauty related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.